The United States of America, after throwing off the shackles of British rule and taxation, she declared in independence, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. These are beautiful words. The truth that is self-evident that all men are created equal, however, seemingly does not extend to African Americans and the indigenous peoples of America who lived there before the country was discovered. History tells us that 12 of the first 18 American presidents were slave owners. All told, over a quarter of all American presidents were slave owners during their lifetimes. And of these, of this quarter, eight of them held slaves whilst in office. It was horrifying uh, to witness the scenes of George Floyd's killing. It was horrifying to, to learn of and see the murder of Armoud Arbery as he was out jogging, just getting some exercise and then was shot dead. You might be asking yourself, what do these events and what do events in the United States have to do with us in the United Kingdom and Ireland? I would answer, they have everything to do with us. You see, what happens there and indeed in any part of the world, it's important to us because Religious liberty, it's one of the hats I wear, is not simply about how we as Seventh-day Adventists are to prepare for a crisis and a persecution that will come. Religious liberty is also very much about challenging, standing up to, and modelling the world which Christ approves of. And I'm saddened to say that our own Seventh-day Adventist church history has shown the terrible deficiencies in this regard. For example, the Lucille Lewis Bayard death. Research it for yourself. It's a terrible stain on our own history. Now, I mention all of this not to bash Americans or to pretend that things in the United Kingdom and, and Ireland are perfect. But I need to highlight that Adventists across the globe are to be champions of religious liberty and this means that we must challenge the evils of society that society may regard as the norm. We cannot be so heavenly bound that we are no earthly good. Seventh-day Adventists need to have a voice that counters the intolerance and the hate. We need to have a voice that lives up to and demonstrates the principles of the kingdom of Christ. And this is not solely a black and white issue. It challenges us to fight against prejudice, whether it is racism, tribalism, nationalism, sexism, and the like. Now, taking a position, speaking with a voice, it, it's not a comfortable position. Ellen White, a pioneer, and I believe a prophet, not only to the church, but to our world, she lived 
in and through the racial tensions and slavery and experiences of America. She saw what was happening in her country first, as a, a first-hand eyewitness. And at one point she wrote, Religious liberty, where the laws of men conflict with God's word and law, we are to obey the word and law of God, whatever the consequences may be. The laws of our land requiring us to deliver a slave to his master, we are not to obey. And we must abide the consequences of the violation of this law. This slave is not the property of any man. God is his rightful master, and man has no right to take God's workmanship into his hands and claim his as his own. You find that in Spiritual Gifts, Volume 4, uh, 4B, page 42, paragraph 2. You see, religious liberty is not just about future Sunday laws. It's about what is happening in our local communities and what are we saying and doing to lift up the cause and the principles of Christ. We cannot afford to turn a blind eye to persecution, injustice, racism, prejudice of any people. We cannot turn a blind eye to the persecution of people who might be persecuted for no other reason than the accident of their birth or their ethnicity or their tribal grouping or whatever. You know, when John, the revelator, was imprisoned on the island of Patmos, he saw three angels delivering the message of the eternal gospel. And he said, that first angel's message, it, the gospel was to go to every nation, tribe, language, and people group. And I believe that in this, God was saying, I value every man, woman, child on the face of this earth, irrespective of their language, their speech, their people group, their race, their ethnicity, their culture, because I want to see all of them gathered into my kingdom. They are all my children. You know, Jesus began his preaching ministry. He began his preaching ministry with the words, of, as Luke recorded them in Luke chapter 4. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Christ came to set his people free. Through the Holy Spirit, we can play our part in helping to set people free, to challenge the prejudice, the racism, casual on social media, wherever it is to be found. God has called us in the Spirit of Christ to introduce people to the liberator, the greatest liberator who ever lived, the liberator who is Jesus Christ, our soon coming King. Ours is not just to condemn the murders that have occurred, and I do condemn them in the strongest terms. Ours is to set people free and to fight as led by the Spirit, but ours is to fight for, an, for equality, for justice, for peace, for respect. May God bless us in whichever part of the world we live, reside of the British Union Conference Territory. Let us do our part in standing up 
for the principles of Christ and challenging the injustice and inequality that is all around us.